When it comes to digital pianos, the battle for manufacturers over the last 20 years has of course been how to get this machine to sound more like a real acoustic piano. But one of the other battles that's constantly being fought, but maybe mentioned a little bit less, is how to get them to feel like a real piano. And one of the categories that has tackled this head on has been digital hybrid pianos. Now, when we use the term digital hybrid pianos, we mean that at its heart, this is an instrument that creates sound digitally, but has all sorts of other components on it that make it feel and behave a little bit more like an acoustic piano. And one of the best examples that have come into the industry within the last few years has been Kawhi's Novus 10S. Now the NV10S and its very short-lived predecessor, the NV10, joined the ranks of, say, the Yamaha N3 or the N3X that had come to market a few years earlier, and both had the concept of bringing an acoustic grand piano action into a digital piano for the first time. The big difference when it comes to the NV10S, and this is really kind of an industry first, is the level of authenticity that they brought to that action. Notably, rather than putting a compacted action in there, this is exactly the same type of action that you're gonna find, say, in a GX1 or a GX2 grand piano. It's using the same key sticks, it's using exactly the same whipping technology and action rail. And one of the most obvious differences is the use of the real damper system. So rather than trying to simulate that extra mechanical feel, they're actually using a real damper. It's always more fun to look at things than just talk about them, so I'm gonna grab a drill, we're gonna get this NV10S opened up and see what it is that we're talking about. So one of the things that strikes me first is just the level of hand craftsmanship that's clearly gone in to putting this together. And that is not something that we're used to really thinking about when we talk about a digital product. And that's one of the things that makes a hybrid product like this just so fundamentally different. It isn't just the tech, it isn't just the design. Every one of these pieces has been hand assembled in this Millennium 3 hybrid action. The other thing that strikes me is it's such a unique mix of natural and synthetic materials. I mean, you can see all of the solid wood key sticks, exactly the same as what you're gonna find inside a Kawhi Action. Also, you know, we were talking about that damper simulation, and we can see this running all along the back here. And you can also see how they have graded the weighting on those dampers so that as we get from the bottom up to the top, those dampers become lighter just as it happens in a real piano. And then of course, I'm noticing on the hammers themselves that all of those have been individually weighted out to simulate that shift from a fatter, larger hammer down in the base up to a smaller, thinner hammer up in the treble. And I can't get over the fact that even though I'm sure there was an alternative to this, they've actually used a real back check with real felt to catch the hammer. And as we move up to the top, we can see the optical sensors. So this is infrared, and there are two pieces of material that intersect those infrared beaming as you're playing the keys. And so the key gets measured at two different points and each one of those sensors has multiple uh, sort of measuring frequencies. So the accuracy by which it's tracking this key is really quite mind blowing. And just before we get the lid back on here, taking a look at the speaker configuration, we can see the six speaker setup that the NV10S uses. We've got the four main upward facing, and you can see from the code that these are not exactly the same speakers. There's a slightly different spectral range between the KS10-7 and the KS10-6. That's why we've, we've got the two different types there. You can also see that there's actually a different impedance on the two. The one is a 24 impedance, the other is a 12 impedance. So certainly a difference there. And then we've got these two front tweeters that are there really just to deliver some of the more mechanical audio artifacts that are coming off of that multi-channel uh, harmonic imaging engine. So let's throw this on and actually give the NV10S a play.
I mean, the action is just so sensitive. And similar to my experience on, say, the Novus 5S, you're just really not used to getting that level of connection and that level of nuance out of a digital piano. But as we've just seen, it's because this isn't really a digital piano. I mean, what we're talking about is a very, very analog way of getting mechanical information to a computer. It's the full meal deal, it's the full action. One of the reasons why watching this category really take off has been so exciting is to see this merge of new technologies and old technologies really coming together to create something that feels just as responsive and just as deep and, and broad in its experience as an acoustic piano 95% of the time, but something that brings the convenience of being able to manage tone as well as really modify and customize the experience to your own liking, and then still being able to connect to computers, mobile devices, everything that you would expect from a modern digital appliance of any kind. What are we specifically hearing? Well, out of the speakers, 130 watts worth of power. Uh, anything north of 100 watts is really starting to become kind of a standard level of power and projection out of premium digital pianos. This is also pumping out 256 notes worth of polyphony. That would normally not be particularly impressive since that's also become kind of the premium standard. What is impressive is that's 256 notes worth of polyphony that's drawing on multi-channel, unfiltered stereo samples. And of course, with the rendering engine, we're getting that multi-channel output that is feeding itself to all of the right speakers. So you're really not getting a stereo experience, you're getting a polyphonic experience in every sense of the word. And for sure, one of the areas that I've been most impressed with has been the touch screen. Now, different companies have very different approaches to this. Roland has limited the screen area on some of their newer products and tried to go with this buttonless interface. It's definitely slick. It definitely has a great aesthetic to it. Yamaha tends to stick usually more towards um, actual physical buttons in a lot of their interfaces. Kawhi with their top series, and this started a few years back, went to an Android driven, um, actually like touch screen computer. And that's really what is allowing you to interact with and access all of the features, there's nothing you can't get to uh, from this interface that you require the mobile app. In fact, the mobile app is just a virtualized version of the operating system that you're already able to access in there. The truly unique thing, and this is where we started this whole conversation today, was just around this action and how authentically they've been able to create the feel for the player, but the way in which they've done it is to not cut out any part of the mechanical experience that you'd get on a real one. Real damper simulation, full length key sticks in here, and then properly weighted hammers. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name's Stu Harrison. Please leave us a comment, let us know what you thought of the videos, and even more importantly, subscribe and join up the community. It is an amazing group of people who love instruments, pianos, and music generally, who I'm sure would welcome you with open arms. So hop in there and start participating. We'll see you again soon, and thanks so much for watching.